Okay guys, P1320, that's a problem with an ignition signal, usually in the power transistor, which is built into the coil. Uh, right built into the top of the coil here, we have a power transistor, and there's a primary circuit that the computer sends to it, and when it starts to go, you can get code P1320. So what we'll do is we'll test the ignition coil to see if it's in good shape. The other thing that we'll check is the ignition condenser. And again, it's not the air conditioning condenser by any means on your vehicle. You have a very, very small condenser and they're inexpensive if it is no longer good. Uh, but we'll check both of these things and we can really pinpoint exactly what the problem is. Now in this case, I'll be doing this on a Nissan Maxima. This is actually a video request from Jose. Uh, from Facebook and he has an Infiniti i30 so our vehicles are very very similar. If you're doing this on a different type of vehicle use the internet to its full capacity. All that you can do or all that you should do is go to Google Images type in your vehicle and then after you type in the vehicle put in ignition condenser and then you'll see a bunch of schematics where it will show exactly where the condenser is. Type in your vehicle and type in power transistor type in ignition coil and just use these images as really a holy, holy grail to find out where those parts are. Uh, so that being said, let's go ahead and let's begin. Now regarding P1320, what we need to do to start off is looking at the ignition coils. So in this vehicle, we happen to have three coils in the rear. One is right here. We have a second one and then a third one down here. And then we have another three up front. So what I'm going to do, just so you guys have a very good view of this, I'll go ahead and remove this top cover, and there are uh, three other ignition coils up front here, and that way we can do a couple of tests. Now, I'll just perform the test on one coil, but you'll need to test all six in this case. If your car has eight cylinders, then you have to do it on eight. If your car has four cylinders, you do it on four, and so forth. So let's go ahead and start by removing this top cover. And these four screws happen to be Allen type screws. So in this case, we'll need an Allen key to remove them. Okay, so again, here we have three ignition coils. What we're going to do is test just one of them, and then you want to run each test on each coil. So let me just zoom in into this coil here. So what you want to do is disconnect the coil. Now there's a plastic harness connector that goes into the coil. To remove it, there's a tab on top. Just press down on the tab. You can hear it click, like so. So press down on the tab with your thumb, and then push out or press out with your hand or your fingers in this case. Now don't pull from the wires back here because you don't want to ruin or disconnect any of the uh, wiring going to this harness. But that's the first step that you need to do. Now the second thing that you need to do, you need to locate the ignition condenser. Now again, this is not the AC condenser, this is the ignition condenser. And on this vehicle, it lives right here, this guy. Let me give you another view. Right here, this is your ignition condenser. Now again, every car is gonna have a different location, but if anyone is doing this on older i30s, the Infinities or the older 4th gen Nissan Maximas, this is where it's located. Now, what we need to do is disconnect this uh, harness connector going to the, uh, to the condenser here. So let me put the camera back in here. So again, you have a tab right here. Just make sure you press down on it. You'll need to hold the body with your other hand, but just press down and then pull. They could be a little tight. Pull on the plastic, don't pull on the wiring, and there you go. Now what we need to do is verify that power is getting to this harness connector. Specifically with code 1320, uh, the problem is that power may not be getting to the power transistor. Now the power transistor for this vehicle is built into the ignition coil. Now what some people may think is, I have code 1320, let me replace the coils. Don't run out and do that because your coil could be perfectly fine or your coils could be perfectly fine, but you have a problem with the power getting to a coil. So that what we're, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to verify that power is indeed getting to this harness and then we're going to test it on the ignition condenser. Once we see the results, then we can go on to the next step. 
Now to do this test, you just need a basic multimeter. If you've never used a multimeter before, they're fairly simple to use. In this case, what we'll need is the volts DC setting. Now that happens to stand for, let me just focus here. So volts DC, that's direct current. That's what your vehicle runs off uh, from the battery. So what we need to do is just dial in. I like to run off the 200 mark in this case and just zoom out. And let me show you what we're going to do here. Now what we want to see is 12 volts. That's the battery uh, <clears throat> voltage on this car. We want to see 12 volts of power getting to this harness. So take the red or the positive wire and we're going to touch, uh, don't drop it, we're going to touch the first terminal, which is this guy right here. Let me just zoom in for you guys to see this. As you can see, there are three harnesses. And you can always tell by looking for the metal connector in there. So one, two, three. In this case, we want to touch number one. Oh, there we go. And then we have a negative or a black wire coming from the multimeter. This goes to ground. Okay, so ground is any good metal point. That's it. So what you want to do is turn the ignition key to the on position. You won't crank the car. Just turn the key to the on position. Okay, to the on position here. Don't crank it again. Just turn it on. And then what we want to do is just take the positive lead and touch it to terminal 1. And there you go. We have 12 volts of power getting to this harness. Now if you don't, then you have a problem with this harness connector. Just look in the back, usually you'll see splices. And uh, don't forget, after years and years and years and years of just heat, uh, it can really wear down these wires. This car is 17 years old and everything still looks good. Uh, but just take a look on your vehicle. That could be the culprit right there. And then of course, we also need to verify if power is getting to the ignition condenser, which is this guy right here. Let me just zoom in. And again, we're testing terminal one, which happens to be this top guy. And there we go. We have 12 volts of power. So, so that verifies that battery voltage is indeed getting to this connector. Again, if it is not, just check the wiring back here. Very rarely you may have a problem with your ECM as well, but usually it's just the wiring back here. Now don't forget, you guys need to do that on every single coil. Let me just get this mess out of the way. You're going to check the, uh, you're going to test that battery voltage on every single ignition coil. Now for the back ones, let me get the camera here. Again, if you're doing this on an older Maxima, you have a coil right here, a second one, and then a third one. Now what I'll do is include a link right now regarding uh, spark plug replacement for this vehicle. And in that video, I show how to get to these rear coils by removing some parts up here. Uh, just in case if you guys need a guide. Now for this next test, we'll be checking the coils itself. Now in this case, just so it's easier for you guys to view, I'm using a, a rear coil here as an example. So what you wanna do is disconnect the harness connector. So again, you press down on the tab and then just pull back like so. Okay, and once you do that, just make sure the ignition key is off. You don't need it on for this test. What we're doing is we're checking the resistance of this coil and you'll do this test on, on all six, in this case, coils. So what you wanna do is you have three prongs here. The left prong is number three. You'll leave that alone. You wanna test number two and number one. So number two, is the middle prong and number one is this right prong. Now what we need again is the multimeter. We'll hook up one lead to number two here. The other lead will go to number one and we should see some kind of reading. If we do not, then this is uh, no longer good and you need to replace it. Uh, but let me just show you what it looks like on the multimeter. So again, here we have the multimeter again. I'm in the ohms setting in this case and now we need to see the resistance the main thing that you don't want to see here is zero. If you see zero, then the injector, excuse me, the, the coil is bad. If you see anything above zero, then you're in good shape. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now, unfortunately, I can't get a camera shot of these uh, leads going in. But again, just you're going to insert one lead onto uh, 
terminal one, and then the second lead goes on the second terminal. And there we go. So in this case, 5.4, which is perfectly fine. And once you wrap up that test, what you want to do is test the resistance on each coil. Uh, because again, if you're not getting any reading on the coil, if you're not getting any resistance reading, then the coil is bad and you need to replace it. Most likely that's why you're getting P1320. So again, don't just check it on one coil. You need to check it on all six in this case. Now the last step is we need to check the ignition uh, condenser itself. Now let's go ahead and do that. And of course the last step is we need to check the resistance from this ignition condenser. And the reading that we need to see is at least, or excuse me, over one mega ohm. Now I do not have a setting on my multimeter for a mega ohm. If I did, I would have an M uh, symbol. Excuse me. So, but I do have a one thousandths place option, and I'm sure you would at least have this on your multimeter as well. So, I know by, if I multiply one thousand, if I get a reading here of anything over a thousand, and multiply that by one thousand on this setting, then that's one million plus ohms, and that's what one mega ohm equals. It's one million ohms. So, if I just confused you, just make sure you place your multimeter to the one thousandths setting and you want to see something on the reading here of over one thousand. If it's under, then you have to change this guy right here. They're very inexpensive, they're less than ten dollars, but let's see what we come back with. So I'll place the multimeter, let me just put it down so you guys can see this. And again for this the ignition key is off. We'll zoom in a little bit. Okay. And let's see what's what. And as you can see, we have something over a thousand, so we know that the condenser is in good shape.